Okay, so I just wanted to give you also a quick overview because, because I personally think that, um, that uh, the multi-touch interaction is a bit overvalued at the moment. Uh, it's uh, there are always these fashions and hypes somehow. Uh, I just want to give you a quick overview what was before and, and how we get, got there where we are. And, um, so maybe first uh, you should know about the Ivan Sutherland sketchpad. It's very, uh, a very important example of early compute, human computer interaction. It was 1963 when there was the first interactive uh, computer program created where you could actually interactively draw uh, on the screen. And actually, this is actually already a touch screen application in 1963. And since then, basically, what uh, we have been converted to was this kind of uh, <laughs> animal. So this is actually a graphics, which is, this is not a graphics, uh, which is, is done by, well, not by myself, it's done by uh, um, Tom Ego. Uh, it's it's, 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 it's in, in a book in physical computing. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the way the computer perceives us until now. So it's a one-eyed monster with a finger on the, on, the, on the head where you just point on single points, no? So that's why I think uh, the multi-touch uh, becomes so interesting now because suddenly after, let's say, 40 years of human-computer interaction doing this kind of stuff, so I just wanted to pick up this thing as well. Where is it? Uh, but the sketch pad. Oh well, I had the Xerox uh, Star as well, which was 1970, mm -hmm. whatever, which was the first GUI desktop. Mm -hmm. And since then, basically, we are pointing and clicking with our finger on the head, no? Um, on the other hand, uh, the multi-touch, which is so promising right now, is nothing new neither. There's actually a nice page by Bill Buxton, which is one of the leading researchers in this kind of human-computer interaction area. He set up a page uh, on multi-touch interaction, and there are some things, which is an important reference, reference, for example, 1983 video desk by Myron Krieger, uh, who developed actually all this uh, multi-touch gesture dictionary, which is so fashionable right now, this pinching, like resizing, rotating, etc., which is now just available in products like the, the iPhone, no? But that goes back 1980s <laughs> as well, no? So what Jefferson Hahn did, he really made a big uh, advance in the, in the issue by developing a really interesting technology for easier detection of fingers, no? like having a, a like quite easy way uh, uh, to detect the fingertips. Well, and he made it very popular. That's also a big uh, thing he, he achieved. Uh, but you should know, for example, there is the chess mutant Lemur, which is a music instrument controller, early 2000s, uh, which is also a multi-touch interface uh, for musical control. Basically, it's kind of a reconfigurable Musical controller, you can develop, uh, define all the faders and knobs, and even more complex uh, controllers here. So, also in this case, what you had from physical controllers, which were multi touch physical interfaces, uh, you have there as well, but reconfigurable and with the advances, uh, advantages of, of software, of course. No? Okay, uh, what else do I have? Well, and as I said, I, I'm not really driven by a certain technology itself. I think computer vision is very useful for our, for our project as well and does the job quite well. But it's not so cheap. It's quite expensive, actually, in the end. You need a projector, you need a camera. It end up, ends up just with the components. You end up with a few thousand euros. It's not something very accessible. So I'm trying to build a table my own now at home, and I really had to try to get down the cost uh, for myself. And well, so for example, there are quite interesting approaches as well, like this tangible acoustic interfaces. That's an approach for detecting touch with sound. So these are a, a surface which has, has four contact microphones, and just by interpolation of the of the time it takes to travel to each of these microphones, you can interpolate the actual position of the of the touch gesture. Uh, this is not so exciting actually with the with the with the surface they use here because, uh, well, you can have alternatives for that. But imagine using the same thing with a, with a brass sculpture, for example. Then you could attach microphones to a three-dimensional object and detect touch on any of these uh, things. So it's getting more or less exciting, uh, but I don't think personally that these computer vision systems are the real future because just right now, uh, earlier, earlier in, in the autumn, like in September, sharp developed, well, actually this, this is, these prototypes have been around for two or three years as well, but now it's a product you can get, get as a developer and buy this stuff. Uh, it's a display which has RGB pixels plus a sensor pixel. 
So it is actually a, a, um, a sensor display when you put things on the surface, it actually takes a picture, for example, a typical application they would use it for is multi-touch, of course, but if you put a business card on the screen, it can scan it in directly from the screen. Yeah. So this is now three and a five in, three and a half inch, but in the future, you could imagine having bigger screens like this, and it will be much cheaper than all these projection systems. But technically speaking, they would work with the same algorithms probably than what we're having right now. Okay, so that's more or less what I wanted to say to uh, encourage a bit of discussion. <laughs>